I thought I'd revisit a classic effect, uh, one that's been around for a while. You might have seen other tutorials, uh, how to make a starry sky. This is kind of inspired because I was just poking around various websites and on uh, robgalbraith.com there was a thread about starry skies and one of the techniques was an interesting one from a fellow named John Beardsworth and I'm taking that idea and kind of adapting it slightly but I thought it was a pretty cool idea. And basically most starry night effects uh, uh, start by creating a layer filling with black and then using the noise filter but he had an interesting variation and that was to take a layer and fill it with perhaps a color like yellow or white, well in this case use yellow. So I'll just go ahead and choose a nice kind of gold yellow. Fill the entire layer with yellow and then change the blend mode to dissolve which at the first glance will have little or no effect. We're basically going to take the opacity all the way down. In fact at a certain point I'm going to have to probably just start using my arrow key here to get it down to somewhere in, it can even go as low as 1%, but you can see depending on the percent you'll get more or less stars. And that was the, that was the idea that uh, this fellow John had, but I decided I wanted to try and take it a step further because I wanted to randomize things a bit. So one of the things I did was uh, consider this, add a layer mask, and on that layer mask use the render clouds filter. And what that'll do, of course, is make a random kind of a mask. You see now you're getting a much more randomized pattern. And of course with that uh, clouds pattern, or clouds filter, I should say, you always have the option of pressing command or control F to just try another cloudy pattern to see what that looks like. Or the other option would be to then try and go under render and choose different clouds to get a much uh, different result, much more black in that case. And then again hitting command or control F to kind of randomize a little bit until you get kind of, kind of a nifty pattern there. Now here's the problem that I encountered because the opacity is already so low if it's still too high I really got no room to go. So one of the ways to fix this or help it I suppose you could say is add a new layer below. I'm going to press command or control key and click on the add layer mask button. That simply puts it below. Then click on the top layer and merge them together. Command or control E. Now I'll have a new layer that basically has the starry sky, but it's at 100% opacity. So now I can play further and start to lower the opacity even more if I want the effect to be more subtle. The other option that this gives me is if I want to do a very slight amount of blurring, either Gaussian blur or motion blur to the stars. So I'm going to keep it really low. So even at a fairly low amount, it's still they disappear almost completely. So I have to just do a little small amount of blur. In this case, I, I won't bother because I don't. I just want you to see that effect. Now, here's some variations. Back a couple of steps ago, let's start again. I'm going to make a new layer, but in this case, instead of just simply filling it with the uh, red or the red, I'm looking at yellow. I'm saying red. The yellow and white. What we're going to do instead is use the gradient tool and create a gradient that uses those colors. Put the opacity all the way up for now. And basically, let's go from white to yellow in a circular kind of a fashion, something like that. And then we'll repeat the same steps. Dissolve, put the opacity all the way down to like 2%. Okay, thought I put 2% in, but obviously not. Let's just do it this way. There we go. So basically, it's the same idea. We're just adding a bit more color in there. And then we'll do the same thing at our clouds layer mask and then we'll add our new layer below command or control click on the new layer click on the top one and merge down command or control E and then we get our nice starry sky that we can again play with the opacity and or the blurriness if we wish to. Now that's it for the first part in the second part of this movie we'll show how to add introduce even more color into the sky and then actually put it into use with an image. So we'll see you next time in part two. Until then, I'm Dave Cross. We'll see you next time. Cheesy. <laughs>